Hi everybody, everybody I'm back. Everybody Jeannie Young is back and I'm back with yet another amazing recipe. The holidays are right around the corner and you all are looking for that perfect side dish to put on your dinner table. Well listen here, you are in for a treat because I want to show you all how to make amazing mashed potatoes. Listen here, these mashed potatoes are so smooth and creamy. They're packed with flavor. They're so light and fluffy. Here's what you'll need to make Gina Young's mashed potatoes. You all, you all never had my mashed potatoes before. You better make you some. Okay, everyone, here's what you'll need to make Gina Young style mashed potatoes. Okay, here are the lovely ingredients that you will need. And you'll see that it's really not a lot of ingredients to make beautiful potatoes. It's just a certain way that you have to do it in order to get them nice and smooth, creamy and fluffy and very flavorful. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. I hope that you all are having an amazing day today as well as a great work week. Okay, so I have, I had a five pound bag of Idaho potatoes. Feel free to use russet if you'd like and also you can use the Yukon gold potatoes. If you use the Yukon gold they're gonna have that yellowish color but when I go to make mashed potatoes I typically like to use the Idaho. Okay now there's several different ways that we can mash our potatoes. This is a potato masher that I've used in the past, as well as this here. You want amazing mashed potatoes? You can use either one of those. You can use a handheld mixer. You can mix your potatoes by hand, or you can use a stand-up mixer like I'm going to do today in this video. So I have a little, just a little under five pounds of the Idaho potatoes that I've washed off. I have a measuring cup here, and I have some beautiful, pure, Irish Kerrygold butter. Okay, this is salted butter. You can use unsalted if you'd like. When I make potatoes, when I make certain dishes for the holidays, I like to put some calories in it. <laughs> okay, and so instead of using milk, I'm going to use heavy whipping cream. You can use half and half if you can't find or get a hold of heavy whipping cream. I'm going to turn these mashed potatoes into garlic mashed potatoes. So I have two large garlic cloves that I'm going to show you what we're going to do with these, which is really interesting. And you can see over here, we have our beautiful seasonings, which would be salt. Any kind of salt that you would like to use would be just fine. I'm going to use sea salt today. Cracked black pepper. Of course, you're going to need some parsley to garnish it and make it nice and beautiful. And if you wanted to use fresh chives or dried chives, by all means, you can. Okay? And then we're going to put a twist on it. We're going to put some sour cream in there. It's going to make it absolutely amazing. But one thing you don't want to do is use too much sour cream. I'm going to tell you exactly how much you should use. And if you don't want to use sour cream, you can put a little bit of cream cheese in there as well. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. Let's get started with this amazing video. Mashed potatoes is on the menu at the Young's house and I'm so excited. When is the last time you all had a nice bowl of fluffy, beautiful, buttery mashed potatoes? Okay, over here to the right of the camera, you can see that I have a bowl with cold water in it. What I like to do is I like to put my potatoes in the cold water. If you were to peel these, uh, maybe the day ahead of time, which would be a great idea for the holidays because you're gonna be cooking so many different things. Cut your potatoes ahead of time and soak them in cold water overnight, they'll be just fine. But if you ever cut your potatoes and you don't put them in cold water, what will happen? They'll oxidize. And oxidize is something natural that will happen once the skin comes off and the air hits it. You know, um, have you all ever seen where you take the peeling off of the banana and your banana turns brown? That's what oxidizing is. It's because the air hit it. So to prevent that with the potatoes, you cut it and you 
cover it in cold water and it'll be just fine until the next day okay so even if even though I'm cooking these here in the next half an hour I still want to put these in cold water because I don't want my potatoes to turn brown all right so then we're gonna go in I'm gonna move some of these potatoes and I've washed these potatoes you always want to take the time to wash off all of your veggies to get rid of any pesticides and then you never know who's handled your veggies before you brought them home so then I like to use a paring knife. Some of you don't agree <laughs> when I use a paring knife. You say, Gina, where the heck is your peeler? I don't wanna use a peeler. I'm more happy with using a paring knife. I'm so comfortable. Uh, my grandma taught me how to use the paring knife and that's what I prefer to use. To be honest with you all, I don't even have a peeler at my house because I love to use the paring knife no matter what vegetable I'm peeling. peeling. The, vet, the uh, paring knife is the way to go for me. Okay, and if you have any dark spots, just um, cut it out just like so. Because a lot of times when you cut through your potatoes, you're gonna find some dark spots. Just um, take the tip of your knife and cut it out. Okay, so I'm gonna continue to peel all of these potatoes and soak them in water and then we're going to come back and i'm going to show you how i like to chop my potatoes now it's very important that you try your best to chop all the potatoes the same size how come well the reason why is because you don't want for some of your potatoes to get done and the others to not be done that's how you form lumps in your potatoes no one likes lumps in their potatoes, okay? Well, there are some people that purposely like to use one of these because they like their mashed potatoes a little lumpy, but we're not going the lumpy way today. You always wanna make sure your potatoes are cut the same size, and I'm gonna show you how you can achieve that. That way, all your potatoes can get done at the same time, okay? And when we put these in the water, I'm gonna use my wok that you all love. Um, that wok is made from Wolfgang Puck uh, Pot and Pan Collection um, that you can find on Amazon. It was given to me years ago as a gift from my dad and he did not get it on Amazon. But um, I've looked on Amazon and I've seen that you can get a very similar wok like I have. Okay, and I use it just for about everything that I make, not just for, um, you know, Asian cooking. Okay, so when I use the paring knife, I'm trying my best not to chop up all of the potato. What I'm doing is I'm just barely taking the skin off without, you know, trying your best not to cut that into that potato, just like so. I'm gonna to continue to do these others off camera. And when I come back, I'm gonna show you how you need to cut your potatoes all the same size so they all can get done around the same time. Be back. Okay, everyone, we've peeled all of the potatoes and now we can start to cut our potatoes. Now the way to get your potatoes all the same size is, you're just gonna cut it nice and evenly. So we're gonna cut right down the middle and you can see that both sides are nice and even. You can see that? Okay, and then we're gonna take, we're gonna flip it over, chop this way. Now you can boil yours in big chunks or small chunks. I kinda do medium. You see this, okay? Just like so. And we have same size potatoes. They're all gonna get done around about the same time. Absolutely. Okay, so as you cut them, you put them back into the cold water so they don't turn brown. That's pretty simple, right? Everything that I can do in my kitchen, you all can do as well. If you have a small tomato, uh, potato, just cut it in half. You don't have to do the four. Okay, just like so. Now, it really doesn't matter 
if you decide that you want to put a lid on your potatoes. But what I highly suggest is that when you start your potatoes, don't start them off with hot water. You start them off in cold water. And I like to rinse my potatoes several times. You can see how this water right here is a little cloudy. That's from all of the starch. I like to rinse my potatoes at least three or four times until the water turns nice and clear, okay? Because I don't want too, too, too much starch, all right? It's, it's great to rinse it off. And you'll notice when a lot of the starch is rinsed off because like I said, that water will turn nice and clear. Okay, so we're just gonna do this with every single potato, potato, however you wanna say it. We're just about done cutting these potatoes. I'm gonna do the others off camera. And when I come back, we'll get started with the process. Everything is so fast. Mashed potatoes are so quick and easy to make. And I'm gonna show you that today. This video will be much longer than it actually takes to make potatoes. Because you know what I do, uh, pausing, I'm talking about different things and editing happens, but these bad boys, they take no time to cook. Okay, everyone, can you see down in this bowl? It's really, really cloudy. We don't want that. We wanna get rid of all that starch, as I said earlier. So I'm gonna rinse this about three times until the water turns nice and clear. You don't wanna use warm or hot water. You wanna use cold water only. Okay, everyone, you can see how I filled the water up in my wok about this much higher than the potato sit. This is cold water, and you can see just how nice and clear it is. That's what you want. This is going on the stove, medium-high heat. You can use a lid if you like. You don't have to use a lid if you don't want to. We're going to cook these bad boys until they're nice and fork tender. And what fork tender is, is I'm going to show you. Fork tender means when you take your fork and you slide it down into that potato, your fork will come sliding right out. That potato will slide right down that fork. That's what fork tender is. But I'll show you during this cooking video. So we're gonna get this on a stove, medium high heat, and we're gonna start to, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. Let's see, before we get this on the stove, let me show you what we need to do with our garlic. Stumbling for words. Okay, so we're gonna give this garlic a nice whack. Just like so, both of them. You wanna knock the daylights out of that garlic, okay? You can chop up your garlic if you want, I just like to do this, kind of give it a nice crush. And what the crush with the knife will do is kind of open them up just like so, okay? And guess what we're gonna do? Two whole cloves right into, oh yeah, right into those potatoes. You're making real garlic potatoes, Gina Young style. Do it this way, all right? Put that in, make sure we don't have any of the skin. This is going on heat, medium high. If you all are cooking with an electric range, you want to cook it between a five and a six. And then if you all have a gas range, you know what medium high looks like. Be right back. Okay, everyone, we have our potatoes cooking, medium high heat. Just gonna watch them. You don't have to bother them. You do wanna cook them for around about 25 to 30 minutes is gonna be that perfect fork tender. But I'll let you know exactly the time that it took for my potatoes to get nice and fork tender. Okay, now when I use my sour cream, I like to start off with two heaping tablespoons of the sour cream and then you'll give it a taste. If you feel like it needs a little bit more, then you put one more. You always start off with a little bit. You never wanna start off with too much, okay? So start off with two tablespoons. You give it a taste. Everything that you're gonna make in your kitchen, you're gonna always taste because you wanna know what things taste like before you feed it to your loved ones. So then, if I'm not happy with the two tablespoons, and then I'll put one or two more in, and that way you can kinda see exactly how much sour cream or exactly how much uh, Philadelphia cream cheese you would like to put in yours because both of them are amazing in mashed potatoes. And another thing that you can do is they have something called a ricer. You can put your potato in the ricer and it's really gonna, it, um, 
it kind of, you push your potato down into the ricer and it makes it nice and smooth and fluffy, okay? You can do that if you'd like. Now, as far as your milk and your butter, a trick to the milk and butter for your mashed potatoes or your heavy cream or your half and half and butter, you never ever want to put it in cold to hot mashed potatoes. It will turn your potatoes to a disaster. You have to heat up your heavy cream and your butter. You have to heat up your half and half and butter or your milk and butter. Whatever mixture you're gonna use, it has to be, the butter has to be melted and the milk has to be nice and warm, okay? So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that. Once the potatoes get almost done, we'll start to um, warm up our heavy cream and melt our butter down. Okay, everyone, so it's been 20 minutes and I've tried to push my fork down into the potatoes and they're just not done. So be patient, having patience in your kitchen is the key to successful cooking. So we're just gonna wait until they get nice and fork tender. Okay, everyone, so it has been 30 minutes. I'm going to test that potato right there and see if it's fork tender, okay? Look at this. Be hey, it's fork tender. <laughs> Beautiful, perfectly done. See that right there? We're gonna get these off of the stove right away and I wanna drain them very well. You don't wanna have any water in your potatoes because they will waterlog and you don't want that. Okay, everyone, so now, while my um, potatoes drain in a strainer, I wanna get all of that excess water off of those potatoes. I'm gonna take one and a half sticks of this beautiful Kerrygold butter and I wanna get it nice and melty. This is only gonna take around about 20 minutes in the microwave, okay? And then I'm also going to heat up that beautiful heavy whipping cream. If you decide to use milk or your half and half, I'm gonna use a little bit over the half point, okay? So that's about how much butter I'm using. And some of you might say, man, Gina, that's a lot of butter. But I tell you one thing, when I make potatoes for the holiday, whoo, bad boy's gonna be good. You're gonna taste that butter. You're gonna taste that amazing flavor in these potatoes. Trust me when I tell you this. And remember the garlic clove that we put in there? Don't get rid of that garlic clove. We're gonna blend it up right into those potatoes. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do one stick and a little bit over a half of that stick. Let's get our milk or heavy cream. And I'm gonna start off with one cup heavy cream, just a little over one cup. Let's get this nice and warmed up in the microwave. Okay, everyone, so all together, I put this in the microwave for one minute and 15 seconds, you can see the butter is nice and beautiful, nice and melty, and the heavy cream is really warm. That's what you want, never put it in cold. You put it in cold, you're gonna destroy your beautiful potatoes. Now let me show you the potatoes. Now I wanna show you how nice and dry these potatoes are. They should never look wet. They should look really dry and the way that I got them dry is I just let them set in this calendar for a while and drain all that water off, okay? So now I'm gonna transfer my potatoes to my stand-up mixer. This can be done by hand. This can be done with the masher or the ricer. You can use a handheld mixer as well. Okay, everyone, so there's a couple things that I want you all to know about the salt. When you are making mashed potatoes, don't put your salt in until they're fully whipped, until your potatoes are done, okay? Towards the end of the process, you don't wanna put them in right now because what I feel like happens is you develop a gummy potato consistency if you put the salt in right now because salt extracts 
water, believe it or not. And we're just gonna wait until the end to put our salt in. And I like to put a nice amount of salt in because I have a nice amount of potatoes here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my wire whisk here, okay? I'm hoping that you all can see down into my stand-up mixer just fine, okay? So I'm gonna whisk this around just a little bit without anything in it on a slow, okay? Just on a slow turn, just to break some of those potatoes down at first. And you might have to go in several times with your rubber spatula, which is just fine with me, okay? Now that we have most of the potatoes broken down while they're still hot, you want to give your butter and your heavy cream a nice stir, okay? I've had my sour cream sitting out at room temperature, so it's gonna be just fine to incorporate. I don't suggest that you put your sour cream in cold, okay? Make sure that it's room temperature. I'm always gonna start off with a little bit of liquid. If you start off with a little bit of liquid, you're always safe. If you put too much in, you can't take away. But you start off with a little bit, you can always add two, okay? Okay, everything's starting to get really smooth and creamy. So here's what I wanna do. I wanna put some parsley in. The parsley is not gonna do much, but give it a beautiful color, okay? I look for a beautiful color in my potatoes. I love to have that green shining through my potatoes. Gives them a beautiful color. Now, I feel like the dry parsley is not gonna change the flavor. Now, you don't wanna put fresh parsley in there unless you don't mind the, ta you know, the taste of the fresh parsley. Me, personally, I mind the taste of the fresh parsley, so I like to use the dried. Now I'm gonna go in with some cracked black pepper and I'm gonna put a nice amount in there, okay? You need that pepper. That pepper's gonna give you an amazing taste. Trust me when I tell you this. Turning it back on and I'm gonna turn this up to a medium speed and I'm gonna incorporate more butter and more heavy whipping cream. Oh my goodness, you better make you some. These are the potatoes you wanna have on your dinner table for the holiday, you hear me? Oh baby. I'm just scraping my potatoes down. They're starting to get nice, airy, light, and fluffy. And then I'm gonna put a little bit more in. That butter and that heavy cream, oh, just a little bit at a time. And then shortly, we're gonna put our salt in. We're gonna give this a taste. I put some more of our butter and heavy cream in. Now I'm gonna go in with salt, okay? You put as much salt as you would like to have into your potatoes, okay? I put a nice amount, cause that's a nice amount of potatoes that I've cooked. I cook five pounds of potatoes. We're gonna start off with a little bit. Always start off with a little bit, okay? Okay, everyone, I tasted our potatoes. I feel like they need a little bit more salt, so I'm gonna put a little bit more salt in. Give it one last mix. All right, now's the time. I wanna put my room temperature sour cream in. Two heaping tablespoons. Just like so, and then you taste it. If you're not satisfied, you put a little bit more in. It's up to your discretion. Look at those potatoes. Oh, look at those potatoes. Oh, look at those potatoes just falling off of the whisk. They're fluffy. They're beautiful. They're nice and airy, and they're smooth and creamy. These bad boys right here are seasoned to perfection. Let's get them in a dish. Let's say a prayer. Give them a try. Look at these potatoes right here. Oh, 
Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for your love, time, your mercy, and your understanding. Please forgive us for our sins. Come into our hearts. We make you our Lord and Savior. Lord, I thank you for the gift that you've given me to share with the world. I thank you for the roof over our head, the food, love, peace, and joy that you bring us daily. Amen. Now, I put just a little bit. I didn't decide to do the chives today, but if you'd like to, that's fine. Um... I'm gonna put a little bit of cracked black pepper on top. You know, you want your presentation to be nice and beautiful. And then I always like to put a nice tad or two of butter right in the middle. And when these are mixed up, that butter is just going, oh, listen here, that butter right there is room temperature, so it'll start to melt really quickly, and it gives such an amazing presentation as it melts into those potatoes. Look at that, Gina Young style. You all never had these before, baby. You better make you some. If you all enjoyed this video right here, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click on that notification bell so you can be notified every time Jeannie Young uploads one of these awesome recipes. Tell your family and friends and everybody you know all about Gina Young and what I'm doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. All right, let's give this a try. Right here, I'm going in right there. Oh, it's so creamy. My goodness, look at that. It's so thick, it's not runny, it's smooth. Oh my goodness. And as always, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you all for watching. Good night. But now before we give this a try, taste that. Oh, mmm. Ooh, doggone, that's good. And the two tablespoons of sour cream was just perfect. Mmm, mmm.